the creation of the School of Engineering and Applied Science is really the fulfillment of a 160-year-old promise. So in 1847, Abbott Lawrence, who was a Boston gentleman who'd made a fortune in railroads, decided that Harvard had wonderful schools of theology and medicine, but it didn't have anything for practical people who were going to impact the world through the application of science. So the Lawrence Scientific School was founded and named in his honor. The other important figure in the early history of uh, engineering at Harvard was Gordon McKay. Gordon McKay was a shoe machinery magnate. McKay decided that he wanted to give his entire fortune to a school that would train people in engineering and applied science. He wanted a different kind of engineer. He wanted a broadly trained, cultured engineer. We had decided many, many years previously that in view of the presence of MIT in the same town, there wasn't much point in Harvard trying to create its own school of engineering. And we'd also come to what in retrospect seems like a disastrous decision after World War II that computer science wasn't a genuine academic discipline. For many years, they really didn't put much emphasis on engineering and applied science. And as time has gone on, and engineering and applied science has been so crucial to both the sciences and the social sciences, Harvard was losing out a little bit. And I was very pleased when uh, the dean, Venki Narayana Murthy, went there because he put a much bigger emphasis on the parts of engineering and applied science that Harvard really needed to emphasize, and he brought it out of the shadows. I was recruited to bring somebody from the outside who also had some uh, feeling for some of the newer disciplines of engineering, the practical side, and in disciplines such as computer science and electrical engineering. And the prospect of developing those programs at Harvard was one of the exciting features which brought me here. A new building was coming online, the Maxwell Dworkin building, and a significant commitment that these areas would grow beyond just being a boutique program. I was on the visiting committee in the early 2000s, and the visiting committee recommended that it become a school at that time. One of the things that the visiting committee was concerned about was visibility. And without being a school, there were a lot of people in engineering who didn't know that Harvard did engineering. And meanwhile, Harvard was getting better and better in engineering. Harvard's engineering school is carrying on a great tradition of technological work. Whether it's the MRI, which has its roots in basic research that moved to become more applied, that is the reason why tens of thousands of children will know their grandparents, whether it's the progress in the computer that today is something we think of as routine, but was almost unimaginable uh, 60 years ago, in which Harvard's Aiken Lab has an important role. Whether it's the ongoing work on energy technology, on climate science, what Harvard's doing in its School of Engineering, is building on a great uh, tradition to do things that are absolutely at the center of intellectual life. You know, I think it's you know, great that Harvard sees itself as wanting to be deeply scientific, deep in engineering, deep in technology. And yet because there's a general flavor at Harvard of having people have kind of a more broad and rounded experience. I think that drives kind of an interdisciplinary thinking. It's a very collaborative uh, uh, organization. There are, no, there are no departments in engineering at Harvard. Probably what's going to be able to be distinctive about the Harvard Engineering School is that it has been so embedded in arts and sciences. Uh, and that the tradition of having students come into it who have a range of interests in technology, in engineering, in science, but also outside of science. Our students are unique 
in their breadth of interests. They are not just here to understand the science, understand the engineering, but they're also very interested in many of the other aspects of learning here on a liberal arts campus. So I think Venke's notion of the Renaissance engineer is key to what technology's place is within our society and what our responsibilities are as universities to human good and human knowledge. One of the virtually unique strengths that Harvard has is the fact that we are embedded in a great university in a great city, and a great city which is a kind of knowledge economy city always has been. There are opportunities for students to interact with our uh, professional schools, uh, lots of students who would uh, benefit from their interactions with the medical school. Like for our students, those kinds of interactions are extremely enriching to them. School of Engineering and Applied Sciences under Venke's reign has been very interested in entrepreneurship and closer ties with industry. This is critical to engineers who, after all, uh, are very often engaged in solving important problems with practical ramifications in the world. And of course, the goal of patenting and licensing and getting technologies developed for universities should be to get these discoveries off the pages of journals, out of libraries, and into the world where they can do so, some good. So I think the relationship that you saw between Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer is an excellent example of how two people with different interests, uh, you know, deep down, but the same goals, can get together and do amazing things. Doing science and engineering at liberal arts institution has both its challenges and opportunities. And the opportunity in terms of education, I think, is tremendous because, uh, in fact, as technology becomes omnipresent throughout the world, we need two kinds of students, engineers and applied scientists who understand not only how things work, but how the world works. And we want humanists and social scientists who understand how technology works because technology is no longer a niche activity. The world has a shortage of people who are deep in engineering, applied science, and technology. And to see Harvard commit to the School of Engineering and Applied Science, to commit to say, hey, we're going to be part of the scientific and engineering revolution. We're going to encourage our kids. We're going to drive our kids. We're going to have first-rate facilities for our kids. I think you know Harvard can play a role in stimulating a much higher general level of interest in science and technology careers, particularly amongst kids born in the United States. One of the things that we can do at Harvard from within the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences is have a real impact on all of those Harvard undergraduates who are going to be corporate leaders, government leaders, who are going to be making and affecting public policy. To study technology in an environment where you reach beyond the simple implications or complicated implications of the technology itself into the even more complex social and political and ethical questions is, I think, essential to our advance as a human race. We can go from wonderful advances in science and take those advances in science, understand what's important in society, how can we turn those advances into ways to improve the human condition. University cultures, when they think about science, and frankly they think about science too little, tend to think about theory. They tend to venerate Einstein. They don't tend to venerate Edison. They tend to think about problems in the abstract rather than problems in the concrete. If you go back through the great scientists, whether it's Newton or Galileo, they drew much of their inspiration from practical problems that had to be solved if society was to progress. We've had a lot of success at Harvard already in bringing people together. If you have the goal of applying what we know about stem cells to curing human diseases. We're going to need a whole new kind of bioengineer, somebody who can put cells back in the body, perhaps in an artificial tissue or organ, perhaps in a way that will protect uh, those cells from the immune response. These are very interesting and important multidisciplinary problems, and they bring together not only different disciplines, 
but different schools. Uh, the Harvard Hospital is one of our great strengths. And what they also do is they show you that there's no bright line between basic science and applied science. I think the transformation into the school, first of all, is heavily symbolic and the importance of the symbolism should not be underestimated. So it gives us some visibility in the outside and people are more likely to think of Harvard as a place to come to to do, uh, to do engineering. Having an engineering school is absolutely critical to any vision of a successful Harvard in the 21st century. I think being a school is going to help a lot in getting people to look at Harvard. It's going to make it possible for us to grow. Plans are to expand the faculty and that will enable us to have um, more specialization but also more breadth and to both strengthen areas within the school but to reach out and make connections to other schools as well. You know, I really do think that the creation of the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences is really exactly what both um, Lawrence and McKay had in mind. And I would say in 10 to 15 years, nobody would hopefully will ever ask the question, does Harvard do engineering? Does Harvard do applied science? That they will realize that these are so important for the future of Harvard and for academic disciplines in general, that this will become an accepted fact.